Welcome everyone to our first Scottish-based training session for Offsite Ready, the project that delivers knowledge for change. My name is Katrina Jordan and I'm an architect and lecturer at the City of Glasgow College. We are a project partner for the Offsite Ready project. The four training sessions will be delivered over the next consecutive weeks, jointly with Construction Scotland Innovation Centre. The session will cover all seven modules and the teaching support system. We are delighted that you have joined us today for fundamentals in digital design and the first steps to utilising this content. The content can and will equip educators and trainers in all areas of off-site construction. This flexible programme is free and easy to use. This morning we will show you a range of videos. We will start with fundamentals, firstly with an overview of the subject, with opportunity for Q&A, then we'll move on to digital design. Before we go any further, um, if you want to ask a question, please click on the chat icon and post it there, and we will answer in the question and answer slots. The webinar will be recorded and the link will be posted on our social network channels. Finally, there will be some polls throughout the webinar at the start of each video. We are keen for you to participate in. After the webinar, there will be an evaluation form. Please complete it and it will help us in providing with the best service. We will also uh, provide you with content in both modules as a follow-up. I would like to welcome our panellists today, myself, Matt Stevenson from Synergy. We also have Kay Keenan from Construction Scotland Innovation Centre. Kay is the project manager for the Offsite Ready project. Let's take a look at our first fundamentals video. Welcome to the Offsite Fundamentals module, which will form the foundation of your learning on offsite construction. To start off, we will introduce some key terminology. A consultation by the House of Lords in 2018 revealed that, quote, there is a real confusion in terms of terminology or terms such as modular, off-site, prefabrication, modern methods of construction, volumetric and panelised all being used. So this is why we will go through some key terms as they will be used in the remaining modules and videos. So we will start with modern methods of construction or MMC for short. MMC includes older approaches that aim to optimize the construction process to obtain better products in less time. This can mean, for example, any building method that improves efficiency, quality or environmental performance. In this way, MMC includes but are not limited to off-site construction. Instead, off-site construction is a way to achieve MMC. Off-site, on the other hand, is a construction method that adds substantial value to a product via the manufacture and pre-assembly of components, elements or modules in a factory before installation in the final location. So off-site is all about transferring some of the building works to a factory. There are four main categories of off-site construction, sub-assemblies and components, panelized systems, volumetric systems and hybrid systems. These can be in any material, steel, concrete, timber or indeed a hybrid material. Sub-assemblies and components are pre-manufactured elements you will be familiar with, such as stairs, doors, windows, eye joists or steel elements. Panelized systems consist of wall panels and floor cassettes which may or may not have a structural function. Open panels are typically without insulation and include only the structural elements and if applicable sheeting on one side. Closed panels include insulation, sheeting on both sides and a service zone and can also have internal lining, external cladding, windows and doors fitted in the factory. Whereas SIPs or structurally insulated panels are solid insulation sandwiched with glue between two layers of aureated strand boards or OSB for short. 
Volumetric systems represent three-dimensional units that enclose a usable space, often also called modular. They are typically fully finished internally and can also be finished externally and include several rooms. Pods are a smaller, non-structural type of volumetric system, which are often used for bathrooms or plant rooms, especially in hotels and student accommodation. Hybrid systems cover a wide variety of construction techniques where different systems or materials are used in combination. Where did off-site construction originate from? Off-site is not anything new and it can be traced back to the Middle Ages when carpenters would often assemble the frames of buildings in their yards to ensure that all elements fitted together. The frames were then marked and dismantled to be transported to sites and reassembled. This system was known as crook frame. In the 19th century, this technique developed into the familiar timber balloon and platform framing. In the 1830s, John Manning, a London carpenter and builder, pioneered the Manning Cottage, a timber house that was standardized and designed to be transported overseas and assembled by unskilled workers. Then, during the Crimean War in the 1850s, British engineer Isambard Kingdom Brunel designed the Renkioi Hospital. The timber frame structure was manufactured in the UK, flat packed, shipped, and assembled on site by unskilled workers in under six months. In the 1970s, the Nakaging Tower Capsule Hotel, the first of its kind, was constructed in Tokyo, Japan. It was designed for business people in the city who needed a simple overnight housing solution. Each of the capsule modules was designed to be disconnected from the central core for replacement or maintenance. Later on in the 1980s, a German engineer conceived the first forms of mass timber construction by laminating wooden planks together with nails, screws or dowels to form a mass timber panel. So we have shown that off-site construction is not new, it has been around since at least the Middle Ages. Today it is applicable across sectors including housing, education, hospitals, infrastructure such as bridges and roads. But why would you build using off-site construction? There are six key drivers behind the use of off-site construction in the UK. The leading one is sustainability where off-site can help with waste materials reduction and integration into the circular economy. The second is regulatory, such as international protocols. The third driver is digitization, with emphasis on building information modeling. Productivity is also an important driver and lean optimization can be used in off-site manufacturing. The fifth driver is human capital or people with a need for more apprenticeships. The final driver is culture, with the need for more collaborative working practice. Off-site construction offers many benefits. The factory environment provides a cleaner and safer place of work. Production is more efficient, therefore performances are enhanced. The factory environment guarantees higher quality, more predictable time scales, better performance with fewer defects and higher customer satisfaction. The optimised use of materials allows for reduction of waste. The application of building information modelling and automation allows for quality control through virtual reality and augmented reality. The design process for off-site construction systems can be described as front-loaded. With off-site construction we often use an approach known as DFMA. This is Design for Manufacturing and Assembly. This includes manufacturing process and standard sizing limitations, dimensional tolerances of the chosen off-site system, transportation restrictions, supply chain, manufacturing capacity and site-specific restrictions. We have some examples of off-site construction from across the UK. Firstly looking at a high-rise building in London. Known as the Cheese Grater, designed in 2014 by architects Roger Stark Harbour and Partners, with Arup being the engineers, the building was a combination of steel and concrete with highly prefabricated components manufactured in Ireland and Northern England. The superstructure was constructed in a very short time of approximately seven days per floor, 48 floors in total within 11 months. Moving north to Glasgow, this mid-rise apartment building in Erlesley Road, it is the tallest timber building in Scotland and was completed in 2017. The project was led by CCG and designed by Mast Architects. It was built using cross-laminated timber 
which was manufactured in Germany. It took 16 weeks to install the CLT and the project won the Structural Timber Award 2018. Off-site is not one way of building. Off-site is not limited to one material. Off-site is not one building type. Off-site combines a range of materials, products and building types. Off-site is efficient. Off-site is a safe and clean environment. Off-site uses modern technology. Off-site is adaptable to clients' needs. Off-site requires collaborative working in teams. Congratulations, well done on completing the Off-site Fundamentals video. To find out more about the technical aspects of off-site construction, go to the remaining six modules and enjoy. I hope that gave you a good overview of off-site construction. Next, I would like to show you a video of Dr. Mila Duncheva from Napier University del delivering some of our fundamentals content. We also have a poll we would like you to complete. Which aspects of off-site construction do you believe needs further awareness? We would now like to play the, the video from Dr. Mila Duncheva from Napier University. Thank you very much, everyone. I'm glad to see so many faces. Today, as you can see, we're going to go through offsite fundamentals. Uh, so, we're going to be talking about what offsite construction is, introducing the main principles and uh, some of the things you need to know when you're designing. So off-site construction is really what you see in this picture here. Uh, so what can you notice in the picture? We've got a panel. The panel is being lifted by the crane and the, and the person is using a remote to operate that crane. So what we see, we see a factory environment. It's not on site. It's protected for the elements. And also the person is not uh, straining himself from manual handling at all. You know, he's, uh, he's in a healthy, safe environment. And that's really what a lot of these factories look like. Um, what can we see from this photo? This is the CCG factory in Glasgow, uh, which produces closed as well as open timber panels, mainly for the affordable housing sector. So what can you see? You can see all the materials neatly stacked in rows according to at what stage of the manufacturing process they are needed. You can also see a very straight line along here. Wait, I can use my pointer. You can also see a straight line along here indicating the different manufacturing stages. So we definitely, it's, we definitely know what's going to happen at each stage, what materials we need, as well as, as, well as what labor we need. Um, you may also notice a few of the screens. We have a screen there, so we have a bit of uh, integration between manufacturing and design uh, using, using CAD CAM integration and automated files. So we've seen it in pictures, we've understood it, and now we're going to go uh, and look at the terminologies. So why, why do we look at the terminology? Well, firstly, because there was a, you can see here from the House of Lords, uh, Westminster government had a big consultation with companies, academics across the UK about modern methods of construction. And one of the main things that came out of that was actually that there's a real confusion in terms of terminology with terms such as modular, off-site prefabrication, modern methods of construction, volumetric and panelized, all being used interchangeably. <laughs> Modern methods of construction. Um, really, modern methods of construction are all about the process improvements because their aim is to optimize the process. It's not a specific system, it's not a specific product. It doesn't matter what it is, so long as it improves the construction process. Now, off site construction is a bit more specific. So, off site is really a way to achieve modern methods of construction, a way to achieve efficiency. Uh, so offsite construction is a method that adds substantial value to product by the manufacturing and pre-assembly of components, elements or modules in a factory before they're installed in the final location. So in other words, it's all about moving <coughs> some of the work from site to the factory where you have better control over the processes. <laughs> Uh, 
the four main types of off-site of off construction systems. We have the panelized type, uh, which is where you have the 2D wall segments, that's the wall segments. We also have volumetric systems where you have the 3D, uh, what is sometimes called boxes, transported on the back of trucks and then installed on sites, as well as sub-assemblies and components. That's all your eye joists or your web beam trusses, all that stuff actually counts as a, as a <coughs> sub-assembly component. And of course, hybrid systems, which combine two or more of these elements into one system, so it's more suitable for the use of that specific project. And what are the drivers for off-site construction where we have sustainability is one of the leading drivers as well as a need for a change in culture so what does that mean such as business models uh, at the moment in the construction industry we have very adverse contracts which are all about blame you know uh, blaming other parties uh, with with offsite construction you have more collaborative less adverse contracts uh, which really help to work on projects together rather than against the different parties in the project. <coughs> uh, okay, we are also thinking about human capital or just people as one of the main drivers for off-site construction. As you know, we have a very big skill shortage in the industry uh, at the moment, so it's difficult to get hold of skilled people. Uh, and so with off-site construction, you have work in the factory, you can train people up to do different tasks, so you can actually have a multi-skilled labor force which you can then re reallocate according to what work is being needed at that point. But you can also have your set labor force. So you don't need to subcontract all the time. You have the people, they're permanently employed in the factory. You know they're gonna be there. You know they're going to turn up. In terms of productivity, that's another critical driver. Um, as I said, the construction industry is actually performing very low in terms of labor productivity. Uh, so what we can have is we can use lean theory as well as automation or te new technologies to improve the overall process efficiencies of the factory and of the projects. This yellow is a bit difficult to read. So this one says digitization. Uh, so that's all your building information management. Uh, that's all your uh, that's all your CAD CAM integration. And we're talking a lot about the fourth industrial revolution. So that's where you fully integrate your design, your manufacturing, your construction process via um, uh, via digital platform. And of course, we also have the regulatory drivers. Uh, so that's really international pro protocols, industry standards. And we saw the example of ALVA, the fully modular volumetric project, where because of the increased requirement to achieve Section 7 gold sustainability, uh, they had to go to a modular system. So that's one example driver of regulations as well. Now, of course, that's all the good stuff about offsite. There are some challenges involved as well, challenges and risk. Uh, the main one is really culture. So people are very resistant to change, not only the construction industry, but in general. Okay, you, you very often hear the words, okay, this has always been done this way. Why would I change? It works. You know, why would I want to change it? Um, so there's really a, a need for change in culture. We need to work more collaboratively. We need to stop pointing fingers and blaming other people. Take responsibility, not pass down the problems down the manufacturing line. Really make sure that everything is done to a very high quality uh, and to very high workmanship as well. Um, so some of, the, some of the challenges we face are transformational, such as project management, set, uh, scheduling, and getting to grips with the skill set. Very often projects are actually, uh, project gun charts, safety are designed for the traditional methods, and then afterwards somebody decides, oh, let's use offsite, and uh, the schedule is not adapted, etc. It just becomes a bit chaotic. Uh <laughs> Now we're going to see what types of materials we can use for, for off-site construction. And to be fair, you will already be familiar with them, okay? They're the typical construction materials. Um, so we'll start with steel. Steel is particularly suitable for large-scale projects where large spans need to be covered, okay? So, so where something like timber would actually give you limiting conditions. And it's a dry method, so it results in a very clean working environment. Uh, if you go, for example, to, I think, um, uh, to where Phantom Park is, you, you know, right by the canal, there's a new project going up. You can see all the steel elements there. So that's that building method. Um, transportation can, however, be a challenge if you have very long components, just because of legislation. We have the same problem with twin turn burnings, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, and the components cannot be easily modified on site, uh, but just because of the material properties. 
Uh, and of course, if you go, if you're near the sea or in, in a similar situation, uh, you can have a corrosion, uh, a risk of corrosion. I really want to emphasize as much as we call them modern methods of construction, etc. This is not anything new. Uh, it's been going on for years. And indeed, many of you will be familiar with the tall building blocks we see over Glasgow and Edinburgh. Uh, so you can see one of them, a uh, similar project being installed here. Those were all prefab. Those were all off-site as well. Uh, but it goes back even more, uh, even to the Middle Ages. So in the Middle Ages, we had crook frame construction, uh, where carpenters would often assemble the frames of the buildings in the yard to assure all the elements could be put together on site, and they would leave carpenters' marks uh, as guidance as to what components need to be assembled when and where. So that was a really early form of off-site construction. And you may, have you may not have heard of the Nakaging Tower, which was the first capsule hotel in Tokyo. That's a very big tourist attraction if you go to Tokyo. So th the idea of that tower was that you'd be able to remove these pods. These are all tiny, tiny pods. Uh, basically, you can have just a bed and then a sink next to it. But it was designed for people who are working in Tokyo, you know, who have a very intense, intense lifestyle that just need to crash somewhere for the night. Um, so it was intended to be uh, to be almost flexible and adaptable so that modules can be taken off or on. In the end, that never happened. It now stays uh, there almost as a monument. So if you're ever in Tokyo, uh, go and have a look at that. This content is editable, editable and free to download from our website. We're now going to open up the, quest uh, the questions. Can't hear you, Kay. Uh, still can't hear you, sorry. So a question's come in. Why should we invest in training for off-site construction? What, um, do you have any thoughts on that, Matt? Yeah, I mean, uh, the uh, skill, skills are going to be increasingly a challenge for our industry, uh, for the con wider construction industry. So having, you know, having targeted skills in the off-site sector, you know, we gain efficiency. We can produce more, more, more product per per individual trained. Um, and it is the future of, uh, of of the industry. So, you know, no better place for us to to, to, to put training and, and, and effort in uh, than in providing that. Uh, it is it is train, training for the future. So. Yeah, I agree with Matt. And I think the, the content um, is, is easy to adopt into the current curriculum as well. Um, mm -hmm. So enhancing the current curriculum. Yeah. And I, th I think it's important to give that visibility on, you know, the, 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 on, on what the built environment is as a potential industry to go into as well. You know, it's a hugely exciting industry. So providing exactly. that training just, you know, opens up the understanding of what's, what, what can be achieved. Yeah, definitely. Another question came in from Robert. How can we reach the 95% or so of companies and organisations who still use traditional methods? Mm -hmm. um, so it's also saying uh, you cite culture and resistance to change. How can uh, we get them excited and motivated to use off-site construction? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think again, you know, sparking that interest by by giving sort of visibility on, uh, you know, on that that future state of, of of the industry is key. You know, recognizing that actually, you know, skills with digital, um, you know, it, it's it's, a, it's such a, a sort of a, a rich skill set that can be applied applied to the industry. You know, I think we're what what that those cultural barriers are, are, are evident and and are a challenge, um, and that's where we kind of need a paradigm shift in things. Now, COVID nineteen for 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 all the hideousness that it's brought and the tragedy that has ensued, uh, you know, it is also a point in time where you know the, the, we we're not going to be. Uh, 
we, the new normal is not going to be what it was before. So, you know, and, and the relevance and the applicability of an offsite approach would be enhanced uh, in a post COVID-19 COVID context. So, you know, the, the, that gives us an opportunity really to, to double down on our efforts and, and reach reach more companies who will recognise they need to do this by necessity uh, mm -hmm. rather than by choice as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost given us a push. And it's also hopefully the Offsite Ready project will, will uh, excite uh, educators and therefore in, in, uh, excite um, learners too um, mm -hmm. and hopefully motivate um, in using the content and then um, developing that, that as a natural culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we're going to, um, so last question from Lucy, does Scotland have off-site capacity at the moment and do we need more investment in factories? What do you think about that Matt? Yeah, I, well I think the first thing is to unlock the capacity that already exists, um, you know, and, and you know, often there's, you know, there's a question, well, you know, do we have capacity actually, it's, it's, it's more can we, can we stimulate the capacity to, to be, to be, uh, to be rolled out to its, to its full potential, you know, and that's more about actually uh, making sure that the demand side is there. You know, the, what 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 a factory process benefits from is consistency and vis and forward visibility on on what's coming through. So if we can, you know, if we can have the the pipeline of work uh, lined up in a in a good and consistent and predictable way, then actually the the existing uh, factories that are already in place uh, have have a lot of potential spare capacity that, that could be dialed up uh, if that forward visibility was there. And of course, in tandem with that, yes, we, we absolutely need to be, uh, we need to be investing in, in new facilities and new, new opportunities, um, uh, you know, and that, that, will, that will come behind that. But let, let's make the most of the, the capacity that's already existing as well. Exactly. It's a, it's a great start um, and an um, incentive. So uh, we'll follow up with questions. Um, in the next session, a poll just came up. So currently, which category of offsite construction are you most familiar with? Panelised systems, volumetric systems, sub-assemblies and components, or hybrid systems? We are now going to um, move on to our digital design, um, and let's look at a, an overview of video and digital design. So our results from uh, is coming in as panelised systems being the most familiar um, form of offsite construction. 88 percent. It's particularly high, actually. Almost all design and construction nowadays is digital. The application of digital design tools can bring many benefits to the development of a project. Digital tools include both machinery, for example CNC technologies and software such as CAD, 3D visualisation and BIM tools. Building information modelling is a key tool for digital design and one we will focus on in this video. Offsite offers more opportunities for integration of digital technology into the design process through CAD, CAM application. This is computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing. With off-site construction in the factory environment, there are a lot of opportunities to use semi-automated equipment in production. Instructions can be generated from the design model, in this way bridging the gap between design and manufacturing. The Reba plan of work with its eight stages is used throughout the industry in both offset and traditional construction processes. The main difference in the design stages when designing digitally for off-site construction is the so-called early design freeze. This is the stage before manufacturing starts, when all aspects of the design need to be agreed and finalised. This can be very detailed, for example, right down to the style of the kitchen cupboard handles. This is a very important change in the mindset for designers compared to traditional process where changes to the detailed design sometimes occur while the building is in construction. One of the main benefits of this early detailed design stage when combined with BIM is the so-called digital twins. These are digital rich component based models of entire projects. This helps to show the stages of the construction process to Industry 4.0 through detailed analysis of the building's performance before any of the works begin on site. This is an example of a parametric component. A selected object 
and now have the ability to change numerous facets about this. This is currently showing a beam in post. Now my beam is at a lower position. If I want to have the beam at a higher position, I can simply select that, press apply, or I can change any other characteristic about this part. Or if this component wishes to be a racking wall made from cross laminated timber, I can simply select that. Or if this wall wanted to be uh, a component made from timber frame, I can simply select that, press apply, and there's a timber frame there. If I go back to the racking wall made out CLT for just now, and if I wish, wish to add a window within here, I can add a window or a door or any form of opening. I can then specify the height, sizes and location of, of this opening. For example, if embodied carbon data is provided for each of the materials contained in the model, designers can manipulate the building's embodied carbon footprint with relative ease. We can look at the BIM model using the layout tool Anything that's changed within the original model instantly and automatically gets updated within the layout. So we've got one source of true information. And this one BIM model creates the entire cutting and manufacturing drawings. And there's examples here. So we've got a panelised drawing here. And above it, we've got all the, the weights and the global warming potential for, for this. If I zoom into one, you can see the cutting list for that one panel. So on the summary for this project, we can calculate exactly how much material of what type was used. And within that, we've already captured the global warming potential for this. So for this project here, we have the summary output uh, ca cat categorizing that, and also your full cutting list and order list for the project. The same goes for time and cost analysis with 4D and 5D BIM simulations, which add additional dimensions to the traditional 2D and 3D models. The application of digital design and off-site in BIM can also have its challenges. In the digital design market, there are large, ever-increasing numbers of software programs and associated file formats. Even within one organisation, you will often find that different people have different preferences for the tools they use and how they use them. Thinking of a typical large-scale residential development, there will be many project partners, each with different software conventions. The interoperability of these tools and their naming formats are often so complex that specialist BIM manager is sometimes employed to decide and maintain the necessary file formats and version control across different software packages. Often the models from different partners are overlaid in one single model using the Industry Foundation class or IFC file format. The application of building tools for off-site construction is often very exciting as new developments keep on emerging in the market. Today we are filming at the Trimble Technology Lab at Napier and we will show you a few tools including SketchUp Pro, TeclaTeds, a drone and a scanner. This is only a snapshot of the technology available at the moment. With future developments we expect to see increased usage of virtual reality and augmented reality design for off-site construction projects. With virtual reality we can develop more interactive training courses such as in the Convert project where an off-site timber frame single family home can be constructed by students and learners at all levels. Similar virtual learning environments can be created for the on-site assembly of off-site systems, thus providing any health and safety training to cover any risks. Augmented reality where the data-rich BIM model is overlaid on top of the actual reality which offers even more greater opportunities for the use of digitisation during manufacturing and construction. One of the immediate applications of augmented reality can be within quality control. As designed and as constructed versions of the model can be directly overlaid to identify any differences and correct them before handover to the client. In summary, the application of digital design tools and off-site manufacturing is enhanced through CAD, CAM design processes. One of the main differences to be aware of in off-site construction is the early design freeze compared to traditional construction. In this, BIM tools with 4D time and 5D cost analysis can be used to predict and optimise the performance of a project during construction. A challenge in this process can be the vast array of tools available with different file extensions. A solution to this is often industry foundation class, IFC, file type. 
In the near future, we are likely to see increased use of virtual reality and augmented reality for training, design development and quality control. Congratulations, you are now off-site ready with knowledge for change in digital design. Opportunities for polls popped up again. So in off-site construction, there are six key drivers. Which do you think are the most is the most important? Sustainability, culture, regulatory, productivity, or digitisation? We now have an interview with Matt Stevenson on digital design. Matt is the founder of Carbon Dynamic almost 10 years ago and now runs Synergy. And sustainability being coming out is one of the most important drivers in off-site construction. So, hi and welcome to the off-site ready digital design training session. The project delivers knowledge for change. Today we have Matt Stevenson from Synergy, um, and Matt was also um, a director at Carbon Dynamic for almost ten years. So, thank you, Matt, for joining us today. Matt, we're just keen to go straight into the questions in regards to digital design. So, um, digi how does digital design and off-site construction differ to that of um, digital design and traditional construction? Morning, and, and, and thanks. Uh, yeah, great to join join you on this. Um, yeah, I, I, I suppose if we look at, uh, at off-site construction and, and specific, more specifically off-site sort of manufacture. The, the creation of, of the, the building as a product. Um, so uh, I suppose traditional construction is often about, you know, just just uh, getting getting something built. Uh, all too often to, 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 to the, the minimum requirements and as quick and as easy and as simple as possible. Now, when we when we take that into an off-site setting, what we're trying to do is create an, an enhanced product, something that has a whole whole life cycle uh, value to it. You know, we're creating an asset, an asset that uh, that needs to be able to, you know, perform optimally over its full life and actually, you know, to com to complete end end of life cycle as well. So it's a whole a wholly different approach. That would be great to see the the uh, the on the on site more conventional sort of approach uh, move move in that direction as well. And hopefully we can set set an exemplar with that. Um, but I suppose in, in approaching it in that way, it means we we need uh, we need a much more robust uh, digital design process. Uh, a process which can capture a significant amount more information and create kind of that golden thread as we would see it that uh, uh, that goes from the design phase all the way through you know um, into the manufacture uh, into the install on site but then importantly all the way through to the post occupancy stage you started to touch on them um, we're talking about the offset um, ready module for digital design it covers key skills such as understanding codes and standards materials and products applying um, IT, IT tools skills. So why are these so important in regards to off-site construction to, uh, for the learner to obtain these skills? That the ability to, to optimise what our end product is relies on us understanding what, what, what constraints we need to work within um, yeah. and how, how we can actually create, create the best possible response to, uh, to, to, to delivering the built environment. And that needs to fully understand and, and appreciate, you know, the standards that are involved, um, and, uh, and and respond in, a, in an intelligent way. So, if if we if we can be fully versant in with all of those skills, then we're much better place to to, to deliver a, again a product um, that, that that is mature. Yeah, and that kind of leads on to building information modeling, and you talk, talked about this kind of golden thread, and it is. Um, BIM is, is adopted now uh, in traditional construction, um, but what are the kind of additional advantages that building information modeling can bring to off-site construction? Yeah, so I suppose, I suppose you know, it, it, it's trying to make sure that that uh, building information modeling info is is leveraged to the full extent that it that it that it can be. So so we you know we will look at uh, we'll use the, the description of digital twin. Um, so that's really that's founded on you know the the, the the creation of that build building information model. 
Um, but what we look to do within that model is, is really enshrine much more, uh, much richer information. So, um, so you have the, that, that fundamental information, but then behind that, we can actually start creating uh, significant amounts of metadata. So, you know, we, we, we will want to uh, assign additional characteristics and attributes to each of the components uh, within our model so that then, uh, you know, when it, when it comes to actually not, we, we don't want to finish at the point where the building is delivered on site. We want that, that, that life of that digital asset to extend right the way to, to end of life. So um, if, we, if, we can, if we can create much richer data that, that sits behind that, and that, that needs to be done from the absolute uh, outset of the project. And what that means is we've, we've, got, we've got something that can respond with that sort of full um, feedback loop uh, all the way through every part of the process. Yeah, but there's a big emphasis there on sort of, um, you know, uh, deconstruction and sort of circular economy. Do you think, do you think that's yeah. really important, particularly with off site construction, because you're, you're uh, obtaining all these benefits? Um, you know, quality, time, you know, material waste, and then if it can be taken right through to the full life cycle of a building project. Yeah, no, I mean it's absolutely fundamental, and you know, and and with the, with the with the climate emergency, you know, the the the, the construction industry, you know, plays such a, 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 a an impact things that role in in the current sort of uh, over, overuse of our carbon budget. Uh, but it also has a, 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 a fantastic role to play in terms of, in terms of uh, reversing that uh, that situation. Um, yeah, and that can be best achieved with with a, an offsite manufactured approach, and and you know with that full full engagement and embracing of the the, the potential of the digital approach. Excellent, thank you. So a lot of uh, terms are used in uh, digital design. I'm just wondering if you'd be able to explain some of them. We've got design for manufacture and assembly. Uh, off-site construction sometimes terms is front-loaded and we have this design freeze. Um, could you maybe tell us a little bit about uh, some of these terms that are used within uh, off-site construction? Yeah, no, sure. So, so I, I guess it, I guess each of them in a, in a, in a way place, place that emphasis on, on the design process and the design phase. Um, you know, we, we will look typically to, to spend a lot, a lot longer in the design phase, which is which is when the, the greatest impact can be delivered in terms of uh, optimized design, in terms of efficiency. Um, and, and so if we, if we spend longer and allocate more resource to deliberately uh, doing a better, better job of that, that design process, um, then that, that will reward us at every, every other part of the process. There's, you know, there's a bit of a, uh, a, 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 a quote is, you know, um, start late, finish early. Um, and that, you know, that relates to, you know, if, if we dedicate ourselves to, to a, a more complete design process, then, then we'll, uh, then we'll get, get the reward the other side. But there is, there is a huge value in, in having a, having a, a, a clear cutoff point beyond which, uh, any, you know, any, any further changes have an impact. Um, but I suppose, you know, in doing this, we want to always try to ensure that that, uh, the, the, the intelligence of the, the, design modeling process that we produce um, enables and, and liberates that, that, that design process rather than overly constraining it. Okay. Um, so, so, you know, when we look at design for manufacturing assembly, we want, we want uh, each subsequent design to build upon the, the knowledge and the information that was generated on the previous one. We want to get a, you know, catalog of greater and greater sort of information so that we, you know, we, uh, as the designers can, uh, can 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 lever that uh, forwards rather than always starting, you know, with a blank page at day, you know, at, uh, at the start of a process yeah. again. Makes sense. That's excellent. Thank you. Um, you did start to mention some um, projects that you have worked on. Is there anything that you'd like to uh, tell us about? So maybe um, in terms of digital design, emerging technologies um, that, that you felt have utilised and, and looked mm -hmm. into. Yeah, sure. Um, so, so uh, um, during my time at Carbon Dynamic, we, we really tried to uh, advance and, and take forwards the, the whole uh, use of uh, digital design and that, that really sort of you know, spilling over into the use of uh, virtual and augmented reality um, to really 
leverage additional sort of tool sets to, to use as designers and manufacturers. Um, the, the Dyson project that, that we delivered was, was you know, that, that was used live in, you know, in project settings to, to help sort of guide a project through. Um, if I talk about the work which we're doing currently uh, as, as, as Synergy, as uh, hopefully a useful example would be uh, we're, we're just about to start manufacturing a prototype for our courtyard um, two bed duplex of, uh, unit. Yep. Um, but that, that, that as, a, as a process is one where we're, 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 we're absolutely embracing the, the digital uh, thread from, from end to end. When, when we do have opportunities to come together, pre-lockdown, um, we would we would had uh, we we would use virtual reality to really uh, delve into and interrogate the design as it stood and inform what the next uh, stages might be. Um, we're now we're now into the design for manufacturing assembly stage, and uh, the project has been has been delivered in collaboration with uh, Construction Scotland Innovation Centre and with uh, Napier University in the Centre for Offsite Construction and Innovative Structures. Um, so at the moment, uh, and Andrew at uh, Cottis is uh, is de de developing the, the the digital twin. Um, so for that, we've we've got a, a whole sort of codification sort of process that's underway, and seeing you know what what information can we embed within that model. And it's, it's we, the the unit is going to be manufactured from homegrown cross laminated timber. Um, so great opportunity to, to to have a commercial commercially viable project delivered yeah. with homegrown CLT. Now, within that model, we want to create the information that we can leverage forwards to make that more viable uh, in the future. So, you know, if we Im embed within that, you know, what the, for example, what the, the curing time for the glue that we'll use for those CLT panels is, then in the future, we can look at the, the, uh, look at the, the layup time and the glue, gluing time and see if there's opportunities to optimize. And therefore, when we, when we go into full scale manufacture, you know, how, how can you, how can you uh, make make advancements w with stuff like that? We will we'll roll that out through the design, uh, through the actual manufacturing process. We'll capture data. We'll feed that back into the model. Um, we'll also then use that to inform what the full scale manufacturer could look like. Um, we would we would aspire to to create a, a field factory uh, type of a, approach for the the manufacture of, of our full courtyards, uh, mm -hmm. so close to or on site uh, kind of facilities for that. So all of that rich data that we'll have captured will help us inform and, uh, uh, and, and sort of simulate what, uh, what that might, might look like and we can become very accurate in terms of our, of our, our, of our durations of manufacture and our, our, our time to install. Um, once, once we've uh, completed the unit at, at uh, CSIC at the, uh, at the innovation factory, we're going to move that out into the yard and install that for, for some post occupancy uh, evaluation. Mm -hmm. um, and again, because we've got that, that full sort of, uh, digital twin, uh, we can then all of the information which we're, which we're gathering in that post occupancy phase, uh, you know, we, we can interrogate that down to the minutiae and, and really get, get that, that, that full, full feedback loop. Now, when we play that forwards to, to having uh, full, full community courtyards, uh, manufactured and delivered on site and and end users and you know, tenants uh, moved into the property that 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 ability to capture and and interrogate that information means that you know that can happen uh, hopefully in such a way that the the interface with the individual is is, is min minimal they all they what they get ultimately is a much uh, much smoother easier sort of um, uh, occupancy of the unit but in the background all of the intelligence is there for, for better, uh, more efficient, uh, more predictive maintenance and servicing, uh, and, and things like that. So, um, and I suppose just just as a final thing, when we when we when we deliver the the, the finished unit to COP26, um, you know, we want we want people who are visiting COP26 to understand the the product that we've produced and how that relates to the the, the full kind of courtyard piece. So you might be able to stand there with your uh, with your uh, your tablet and Turn on different different augmented layers that, that sit over uh, over the top of the individual COP26 unit and actually project the, the sort of full courtyard scenario. We can toggle on for you know what the energy sort of uh, performance looks like, what the flow of data looks like, um, it, all sorts of uh, addition, additional additional layers of information that allow for that full 
full sort of expression of the, the, the value proposition of that as a unit and hopefully significant engagement with, uh, uh, with what that can be as a product. So, um, so yeah, that's lots, 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 lots to do with it, I'm sure. That's brilliant. That's excellent. Very exciting project. Um, thank you so much, Matt, for joining us today. Um, and thank you for your own and continual support to the off-site radio. So we'd just like to now open up to the participants, our final um, question and answer slots. I think we've got a question coming in from Stuart from Glasgow. Um, Stuart is uh, saying he's a modest joinery manufacturing workshop. He has one in the north in North Glasgow, which provides a service to our own commercial projects. He's asking where would he start to obtain startup in this area of new manufacture, and who is the lead to go to uh, if he was wanting to move forward in this area? Um, yeah, I, I could uh, jump in on that. Uh, so I, I think that the, the obvious port of call for, for, the, for that conversation would be with uh, Construction Scotland Innovation Centre. Uh, you know, there's there's, there's great resource uh, there in terms of knowledge of uh, the, the steps that might need to be taken. There's also the Innovation Factory, which uh, I mentioned uh, in my in, in the interview there. You know, which is a, a space where where industry can. Uh, can really sort of test. Um, uh, it's like an offline process where you you can test uh, different different routes to to explore. Um, I, I'm aware of a, a company, so I don't know the specifics, but they they came in and sort of used the the automated uh, uh, framing line and uh, um, the, the um, all, all of the equipment and automation that exists within the innovation factory. That then is a, a way to to test drive. Uh, what that might look like uh, for, for, the, for that industry partner, with a view to then uh, being able to, 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 to make the required investment and roll that out themselves. So, um, uh, so, so, so yeah, I would, I would say that's, uh, that's, that, that's, that should be a protocol. Yeah. Yeah. There's also another question uh, come in. Uh, this one is from Kevin, and he's asking, do you believe it is a cultural issue to push off-site construction forward? Or is it a cost issue? As I know, smaller firms tend to make panels on site themselves as it's cheaper than buying from an off site company. Using an off site company could be different from winning or losing a contract due to extra cost. Uh, what are your thoughts, panel, on that? And would you agree? Yeah, I think it's a cost and cultural issue. Um, yeah, there, there is this. Um, issue with smaller uh, construction companies um, ha making sort of trying to come up with resources to produce the off-site panels but I think Matt what, what do you think your way way around that is with smaller construction companies yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, I think I think the trick is whether that offsite approach allows you know allows them perhaps to to, to deliver more or to uh, deliver greater value. You know, if uh, I, I think I think one of the key advantages that, that the offsite approach can do is to is to bridge the performance gap. You know, we 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 see uh, you know and and cer certainly you know a, 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 a smaller firm that you know the, they may be nailing the the the, the quality uh, sort of spot on 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 site and that, that and that's great. But you know. I think uh, I think all too often what we see, what we see uh, with on-site construction is is significant performance gaps. So that gap between what is designed and anticipated and calculated for and what's actually delivered. You know, the off-site approach allows us to have that that absolute sort of, uh, surety over over quality, um, mm -hmm. and that 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 drives the the the, the performance of the resulting building. Um, I yeah I think but but everyone will need to engage themselves what what works with their business model and I, I suppose engaging engaging more in in what the potential is and how that could unlock more potential within within the individual business uh, would be the approach I'd suggest to take. Thank you. Thanks. There's another question that's come in, Katrina. Perhaps you can answer this one. Uh, the question is asking, what can the education sector do to prepare students for an increasingly off-site industry? Well, uh, 
utilizing the off-site ready content is one of the kind of first steps in in the in the content we have a teaching support system so not only are we providing uh, teaching content but the support system is identifying where you can integrate these modules within your in the current curriculum and also methods of um delivery so for example teach a, a lecture a site visit a, a design project so that's all contained in in the content um, so i think the first steps is integrating it into the current curriculum and identifying where the gaps are and where where off-site construction teaching and learning can be adopted so um, i'm a lecturer myself so taking that i can projects that I deliver, I, I know ways in which I can um, adopt it. So I'm still meeting the current curriculum, the um, outputs, but I'm adopting off-site construction within it by utilising the off-site ready content. Yeah, yeah and I'd, I'd, I'd make a, sh uh, sort of a shout out in this, uh, having been fortunate enough to sort of engage with uh, Design Engineer Construct uh, in the past uh, and, and yeah. Yeah, on an ongoing basis. You know, there's that. You know, that's that's a great resource there for schools to 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 uh, to inform the, the the kids coming through in a curriculum based sort of way. You know, of of just just what an exciting industry it is, and you know, to see to see the the, the outputs that are, uh, are produced is really inspiring. You know, for for, for me to sort of anticipate uh, that that next generation coming through in, in yeah. into the industry is brilliant. So. I think that's a great point uh, from Matt because also that uh, thinking about um, uh, gender in the in construction industry as well. So get capturing the kind of younger uh, school age is brilliant and integrating the, the off-site methods there. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks both. Uh, the, uh, the last question has come in from Anne and I think possibly Matt, this one is for you. What are your thoughts on the government ban on external wall combustible materials uh, of 18 metres above post Grenfell and the impact that this will have on sustainable building solutions? Yeah, sure. So it's a it's a it's a big subject. Um, obviously, the last day for the UK government's consultation piece was was yesterday. So uh, you know, submissions are in, and I think there will have been a strong response from the industry. Um, certainly, we uh, I put a uh, you know a, a hopefully a robust response in in terms of my views on this. Um, look, uh, to, to to simplify it, uh, you know, we it. it a ban on the combustible materials that is is just a blanket ban that that ties uh, timber-based products in with poly polyethylene and then you know, um, and you know diff diff very different products um, is is a very blunt way to to address this and it and it is not consistent with the need that we have to to really address the climate challenge. Um, you know, tim timber is our one product that. Uh, uh, that that is available to us as a, a renewable uh, resource, which sequesters carbon, which uh, which um, which counters um, counters the, the you know our our erosion of our of our carbon budget. Uh, uh, we've got a finite budget available. We need to move to to more and more timber. So it's inconsistent with that. It's also you know I, th I think. Uh, I think the fact that it's all, you know, all combustible materials within the, the sort of external wall uh, is 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 uh, is not a helpful approach either. You know, I think if if it, if it addressed the cladding separately from the from the structural uh, elements, you know, that that would be a helpful distinction. Um, you know, we we would we would aspire to use. Uh, mass timber products in, in that those those taller buildings, uh, and that's a very very uh, very robust material to be to be using in that scenario. Uh, and the, you know, and there is the, the, there is good technical uh, information out there which would support that. Obviously, we you know we need to do more as an industry, um, but yeah, let, let's let's hope for a uh, an intelligent response to, uh, to to the to the current proposals. Um, uh, at least in, with, in Scotland, we have you know we we can sort of demonstrate uh, the technical uh, compliance uh, 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 in, within higher buildings, and that's that's at least a, a more a more nuanced and holistic approach. Sorry, there's just one late question that's come in before we hand over to Katrina, and this is from Nigel. And Nigel is asking, uh, can someone tell, on the panel tell me what the parametric program being used in the video was? Um, I'm not sure, Katrina, if that's you that would know that or Matt. Um, I think, uh, off the top of my head, I think the parametric program was um, 
from CCG, but I would need I would need to check, and we can follow that up with that. Follow that up with Nigel. Okay. I just I can't think off the top of my head, but I think it was CCG. Okay. So thanks, Matt, so much um, for your expert knowledge um, and for your uh, support in the Offsite Ready project. Um, just to finish off, um, we'd just like to thank everyone uh, for joining us this morning. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed it uh, and we can't wait to, until next week um, when we have Dr Owen O'Toole joining us from Napier University and Jamie Hillier from Ackerloff a company which focuses on modern methods of construction, talking all things estimating and commercial. In the meantime, please visit our website at www.offsiteready.com to access our fundamentals teaching material. We will also send out everyone a handout this morning. So thank you everyone, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thanks.